All right, my camera guy paused the camera and I'm upset. But we're gonna just take that as a sign from God. I usually do my video feeds straight through, so there won't be too much of an edit job other than putting the two videos together. Okay, back to what I was saying. Atheism, polytheism, monotheism, and we are gods, which I don't have a category for. There's no name for that yet. Atheisms don't believe in God. Monotheisms believe in one God. Polytheism believes in many gods. And we are gods believe that the human existence is God, either directly from monotheism or polytheism or just by evolution, natural selection, and all that stuff. What we need to understand is the idea of God, because that is the true source of God. The idea of God comes from natural observation and experimentation. Science is the, is the, is the field of understanding the, the natural surroundings through observation and experimentation. Religion is the study of God. It is, it is, the, it is the science of believing in God. That's why our religion and science don't get along. Because when science proves natural order, it dismisses beliefs. And religion is based on just beliefs. You can disprove you can disprove a belief through science, but you can't disprove God. God is not observable and not He's not observable, and you can't experiment to suggest that this is God. So that's why they copy. So here's how it is. As a child, because the best way to tell them, the best way to get someone to understand your position is to give them a story. So as a child, when I was younger, after I was born, my younger sister was born. My mother was the source of my sister. Before my mother had my sister, my sister did not exist. Then my sister existed. This is before I understood biology. My mother explained to me exactly how she was pregnant and how my daughter, how her daughter, my sister, would be born and I would have a little sister. My mother kept explaining to me how I had a sister before I even had any evidence of a sister. As a scientist, there was no evidence of a sister. My mother was two months old. My mother was two months pregnant. No, no, no evidence of a child from my perception as a child, but explaining to me that she had a daughter. After my daughter, my sister was born, she became part of my reality, and I understood that, just like my sister, I came from my mother. And the question becomes: Mothers give birth to children. If mothers give birth to children, who give birth to mothers? Obviously. The next logical conclusion would be fathers are responsible when that, but we're going to stay clear of that subject for the moment and focus on just the actual source. Because my existence began with my mother's existence. Her existence began with her mother's existence. Her mother's existence began with her mother's existence. The logical question becomes who was the first mother and or father? It is, this, it is the nature of that question that is the driving force for God. Because everyone that, is, everyone that exists has to believe that their existence is based on their parents. Every parent's existence has to be based on the belief that every parent's existence is based on their parent. So who was the first parent? Who gave, first, who gave birth to the first parent? God is origin and creation. Whether we climbed out of the primordial soup or not, God is origin and creation. Whether you believe in ancient aliens or not, God is origin and creation. If aliens came to this planet and created man from the monkeys, who created the aliens? Did they have ancient aliens? If they did, who created them? Where does the origin begin and the creation begin? This is what I this is what I think. I think that God existing as male and female, being a product of mind, body, and spirit, gave rise to our universe. That's to say that the Big Bang or whatever you want to call it was the birth of everything, and it started with God. Yeah, I'm assuming that God was somewhere else. I am implying that, but I want to stay on focus. We can get to that later. What I'm suggesting is the first mother and father was God. The, the, the God essence gave birth to all of existence and gave rise to humanity through evolution or whatever process you want to call it. The evidence of that as a scientist is all around us. What you need to recognize and understand is a mother is the birthing parent. It is incorrect to say he gave birth because males, by definition of masculine, male, boy, son, father, do not give birth. Only mothers give birth. If God is creation, creation is birth. 
And in that essence, God gave birth to humanity. That doesn't necessarily imply that God is female. It just means that God has male and female attributes as one because everything that exists is directly from God. With that said, there is one thing on earth, there's one observable phenomenon, scientifically and religious, that every human being recognizes and is self-aware of. Ancient religions that predate even science in this observation shows this to be true. And what that is, is it's self-rising. Self the idea of self-rising predates any natural observation of it. All religions all around the world, separated by millennium of time, space, etc., etc., all had a foundation in either self-rising or not self-rising. For instance, all gods are based on the idea of self-rising. Most atheists reject the idea of a god because they reject the idea of self-rising. So they're interconnected. Most atheists don't believe in a god because they would say something had to be around to give birth to God. But the evidence of self-rising is scientific and very measurable. The evidence of self-rising, which is very scientific and very measurable, is in fact what we call microorganisms. A single cell organism is a single cell microorganism that's, that's a living, that's basic unit of life on Earth. You can look it up on Wikipedia or Google it. It's algae or any other micro, germs, virus, not viruses, but germs specifically. What they do is, through a process of cellular division, they can reproduce themselves without a sexual partner. It's called, it's called self asexual reproduction. That means that you don't need two cells to reproduce. I don't want to go into reproduction. Look it up. You don't need two cells to reproduce. So an algae cell as one living being can give birth to another algae cell. This is found in evidence in nature. This is self-rising. This is something that we understand scientifically and logically in the 20th century because of micro microscopes and all this other um, stuff. What we can't show in nature without the use of microbiology is self-rising. We can't point to nature and say that's self-rising. Nothing in nature is self-rising. If we understood our culture, we knew that plants were not, in fact, asexual creatures. We understood that, that plants had ovaries, whether we named them ovaries or not, that the, people of the, the, the primitive people of the past understood that it took pollen to create plants. You need to pollinate a plant cross species, we, there is evidence to show that biology, botany, agriculture, all this stuff understood exactly how the plants work. They understood that plants reproduce sexually. They, repro they understood that animals reproduce sexually. They understood that the fish reproduce sexually. They understood that all of the life forms on the planet Earth reproduce sexually. They understood that everything that exists in nature was there because God created it. Nothing that existed wasn't, a, wasn't from a direct source of God. That means that nothing that existed was self-rising in their limited understanding of their natural universe. Yet, they still had an idea of self-rising. That is the source of God. It's the fundamental existence of God. Self-rising is the fundamental existence of God because it predates any evidence in nature of God. As a scientist, we explain observable phenomena. How did scientists of the past, which are religion is the study, of, is the science of believing in God. How did science of the past recognize self-rising without any evidence of self-rising? And that is where I draw my conclusion that there is a God. Because the existence of self-rising gives birth to God. Everything is built on that. If you believe, if you believe science, then you believe that your body is a million trillion single cell asexually producing cells mother cells. Your entire body is comprised of the feminine God essence. It doesn't make you a girl. I'm not implying anybody's gay. I'm just I'm just acknowledging that the asexual cell being the birthing parent of its child mother cells or child daughter cells is showing you self-rising. Your very existence is based on polytheism. Every Everybody's existence is based on polytheism. The, I, the notion that there is a level of self-rising and, and a community of nothing but these millions and millions and millions of beings. Self-rising is the evidence. And that is my, my two cents. It's the fundamental existence of God. I can go on forever, but YouTube only gives me 10 minutes.